tenth misconception is that we Muslims we eat animals and we behave like animals violent and ferocious I do agree that today medical science tells us that what we eat it has an effect on our behavior that's the reason we Muslims we are not permitted to eat the carnivorous animals like the lions tigers leopards etc we are only allowed to eat the peaceful animals like the cow goat sheep etc because we are peace lovers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Araf chapter number 7 verse number 157 the Prophet commands you that which is good and prohibits you and withholds you from that which is evil and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Hashir chapter number 59 verse number 7 وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولَ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنُوا فَانْتَهُوا so take what the messenger has given you and withhold yourself from that which he withholds from you. There are certain types of food which are prohibited by our beloved Prophet Muhammad Certain wild animals, the carnivorous animals, those which belong to the cat family, like the lions, tigers, leopards, etc. Certain rodents like mice, rats, etc. Certain reptiles like snakes, alligators, crocodiles, etc. Certain birds with talons, with claws, like crows, owls, etc. The eleventh most common question is that we Muslims, we are against idol worship, then why do we Muslims bow down to the Kaaba? Kaaba is only our Qibla, that is the direction. We Muslims, we do not bow down to the Kaaba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 144. al Masjid al Haram. Then turn thy face to the sacred mosque. For example, if you Muslims we want to offer salah, some might say let's face towards the north, some might say let's face towards the south, some might say let's face towards the east, some might say let's face towards the west. So for the sake of unity, we Muslims we face towards the Kaaba. And Kaaba is only a Qibla, that's the direction. And Ali Idrusi, 1154, he drew the world map. And the South Pole was on top, and the North Pole was down, and the Kaaba was in the center. Later on, the Western cartographers came and they turned the map upside down. North Pole top, South Pole down. Yet, Alhamdulillah, the Kaaba is yet in the center. So, wherever you are, if you are in the North, you face towards the South. If you are on the south, you face towards the north. If you are on the east, you face towards the west. If you are on the west, you face towards the east. And when we Muslims, we go for Hajj and Umrah, why do we circumambulate around the Kaaba? Because it is the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. But the logical reason that I can think of is that every circle has got one center. So we testify that there is only one God who is worthy of worship. And the statement of Hadrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, the second caliph of Islam. It is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 2, book of Hajj, chapter number 56, hadith number 675. Hadrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Inni a'lamu annaka hajar, la tadurru wa la tanfah, lawla anni ru'aytu nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuqabbiluk, ma qabbaltuk. Hadad Umar pointed to the black stone says that I know that you are a black stone and can neither benefit me nor harm me. Had I not seen Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kiss you, I would have not kissed you. So the statement is sufficient to prove that we Muslims would not bow down to the Kaaba. And those Sahabas at the time of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who even stood on the Kaaba and gave the Adhan. Which idol worshipper will ever stand on the idol he worships? So this is sufficient to prove that we Muslims, we do not bow down to the Kaaba. The twelfth most common question is that why are non-Muslims not allowed in the holy cities of Makkah and Medina? Every country has got its certain restricted areas called the cantonment area. Only those people who are enrolled in the defense and the military of the country, they are allowed in this cantonment area. Though I'm a citizen of India, yet I'm not permitted to enter 
certain restrict areas called the cantonment areas. Only those people who are enrolled in the defense and the military of the country, they are allowed in this cantonment area. Similarly, the cantonment area of Islam are the two holy cities of Mecca and Medina. Only those people who believe in Allah and are ready to live and die for Islam, they are allowed in this cantonment area. And another reason that I can think of is that whenever we want to go to a country, we require a visa. And one of the most difficult countries to get the visa is the United States of America. They ask you several questions. Nowadays, they even ask you, are you a terrorist? Do you belong to a terrorist organization? I am asking the question, has anyone said yes? So unless you fulfill that terms and conditions, you will not be permitted to get the visa. Similarly, if you happen to go to Singapore, on the immigration form it is mentioned, death to drug traffickers. So if you want to enter Singapore, you have to abide by the rule. You can't say death penalty, such a barbaric law. If you want to enter Singapore, you have to abide by the rule. Similarly, the visa for entering the two holy cities of Mecca and Medina is to say with our lips, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he is the messenger of Allah. If anyone says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, then no human being can stop you from entering the two holy cities of Mecca and Medina. The thirteenth most common question is, that why does Islam prohibit the having of pork? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in no less than four different places in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 173 in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 3 in Surah Anam chapter number 6 verse number 145 and in Surah Nahal chapter number 16 verse number 115 حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْدَةُ وَدَّمَ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُحَلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ Forbidden for your food are dead meat, blood, flesh of swine, and any food on which any other name besides Allah's name has been taken. These four types of food are prohibited for us Muslims. And it is even prohibited in the Bible. It is mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8. That the swine, though it divide the hoof, yet chew it, not the cud. He is unclean for you. Thou shalt not eat their flesh, nor shalt thou touch their dead carcass. They are unclean for you. And it's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. That the swine doeth divide the hoof, yet chew it not the cud. He is unclean for you. Thou shalt not eat their flesh, nor shalt thou touch their dead carcass. And for the third time, it's prohibited in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5. The swine is prohibited. Even according to the Hindu scriptures, swine is prohibited. It is mentioned in Manusmiti, that the Brahmin, the twice born, he should not eat cock, onion and the meat of pig. And furthermore it is mentioned that whosoever sells the forbidden meat, that is the meat of pig, his opposite hands and limbs should be chopped off. Punishment, that is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. So even Hinduism, Christianity and Islam, all these scriptures, they prohibit the having of swine. Let's analyze what are the logical and scientific reasons why swine is prohibited in Islam. If we analyze, if you eat pork, you can get no less than 70 different types of diseases. Pinworm, ringworm, tapeworm, roundworm, you name it and it is there. And many helminthes. And one of the most dangerous helminthes is the tinea soleum. And in layman's terminology, it is called as tapeworm. And it harbors along the intestine. And if it enters the brain, it can cause memory loss. If it enters the heart, it can cause heart attack. If it enters the liver, it can damage the liver. Whichever organ it enters, it can damage it. And by the time you realize that you are suffering from the stenia soleum, it is too late. 